INFJs and INFPs are some of the rarest personality types on the Myers-Briggs personality test. Because they have a lot of traits in common, this can make it difficult for someone to tell if they're an INFJ or an INFP. This is due to the fact that they both share the INF components of the Myers-Briggs personality, introverted, intuitive, and feeling. Where they differ, however, is in the last component, with INFJs ending with judging and INFPs ending with perception. Today on How to Charisma, we're going to look at the six differences between an INFJ and an INFP to help you figure out which one you may be. Number one, decision making. If you're an INFJ, then you're efficient with decision making. You find satisfaction in the actual making of the decision and not in the decision making process. This is due to your judging trait, which makes you take joy in being decisive and having things settled. Similar to how you process information, you often make decisions based on the gathering of information. You then analyze this information, even if it's unconscious, to understand patterns in order to come to a rational decision. As an example, let's say you're an INFJ and are planning a summer trip. While you'll gather the necessary information on possible destinations and the advantages and disadvantages of each, you'll do so in order to get the ultimate gratification, which is you making the final decision of where to travel. INFPs are different. You don't feel the need to process information quickly just to get to a decision. Instead, you like looking at all the possible options of something before making a final decision and enjoy the actual process of coming to a conclusion. In our previous example about planning a summer trip, if you're an INFP, you'll relish the process of coming to the decision of where to travel. You might get excited researching all of the possible destinations and what you could do in each place. You won't necessarily rush to make a decision because the process of gathering information is just as, if not more enjoyable, than reaching a conclusion. Lastly, decisions might align with the personal feelings and values of the INFP. In other words, for an INFP, a decision must never be based purely on logic. It usually involves the heart as well. Number two, processing information. One of the ways INFJs and INFPs are different from each other is how they process information. INFJs use what's called introverted intuition in that their mind gathers information in a way that focuses on patterns, hidden meanings, and implications for the future. The INFJ way of processing information enables them to make sense of the big picture for many little details. Because INFJs' minds work this way, they might not even realize that this collection of patterns is the underlying reason why they are processing information the way they are. Often INFJs report simply having a gut feeling about something, but there is an extraordinary amount of information that their mind has processed that leads to that gut feeling. For instance, let's say you're trying to figure out why your friend suddenly seems short-tempered. You'll likely process this information through all the facts and patterns your mind has gathered, such as remembering that they had a bad day at work, that they hadn't slept well the night before, and that they had been worried about the health of a family member, even if the processing of all this is unconscious. On the other hand, INFPs often process information through emotions, focusing on how they feel about something. If you're an INFP, you'll use your emotions and the emotions of those around you to make a decision. Unlike INFJs, who have a need to see the big picture, you like to make sense of all the details. Looking at our previous example, if you're an INFP trying to figure out why your friends seem short-tempered, you might remember noticing that they weren't smiling much when you were together, that they seemed sad, or that they teared up when they were talking about their tough day at work. This manner of processing information through emotions rather than patterns is what distinguishes INFPs from INFJs. Number three, experiencing emotions. INFJs experience emotions deeply. They not only experience their own feelings profoundly, but also the emotions of others, making them very empathetic. This is due to the extroverted feeling INFJs possess, which enables them to notice the emotional atmosphere around them. However, just because they feel things deeply doesn't necessarily mean that they're able to process their own feelings well. Because their emotional side is extroverted, they're often better at understanding the emotions of other people better than their own. For instance, they might be able to easily understand why a friend is upset and what to do about it to help them feel better. On the other hand, if they're feeling hurt, they might have a hard time figuring out why and an even more challenging time trying to understand what they can do to make these feelings go away. While INFJs have extroverted feeling, INFPs have introverted feeling, meaning that they are more in tune with their own emotions than those of others. 
Because of this, if you're an INFP, you feel your own emotions deeply, but often conceal these feelings and aren't as comfortable sharing them with others. You might only be comfortable sharing them with close friends and family. Additionally, INFPs don't feel the emotions of others simply by observing and being around others, like INFJs do. Instead, if you're an INFP struggling to understand how someone feels, you may imagine yourself in their shoes and reach an understanding of this person's emotions through envisioning your own experience if you were in their place. Number four, dealing with control. One of the surest ways to figure out whether you're an INFJ or an INFP is to look at how you deal with control. INFJs love order and control. If you're someone who loves to-do list, planners, and scheduling out every minute of your day, you might be an INFJ. You're usually highly organized, on time, and have plans for everything. However, because of this, you can become stressed and overwhelmed when you feel like you have a lack of control over a situation. And because you crave external control as an INFJ, you might find yourself struggling with your internal control. INFPs, on the other hand, prefer internal control over external control. Unlike an INFJ, you may not feel a need to have a plan for everything. However, you strongly value your own control. If you're an INFP and someone attempts to control you or influence your choices, you might find yourself getting angry or frustrated. While you might be okay with external chaos, when it comes to internal or personal control, it's something you crave intensely. Number five, privacy. Because of their introverted nature, INFJs and INFPs are both very private personality types. However, they handle privacy in different ways. INFJs are far more private than INFPs. Again, this goes back in their part to the extroverted feeling, making them more receptive to the feelings of others but less comfortable sharing their own emotions. In fact, it can take months or years for even their closest friends to feel that they truly know them. If you're an INFJ, you may have a circle of friends and loved ones you consider close, but you still might not feel comfortable opening up to all of them. There may only be one or two people in your life that you feel know you really well. However, this feels most comfortable and you would prefer keeping parts of yourself private. INFPs are also private, but open up quicker than INFJs. Though they do need to be able to trust someone before feeling comfortable opening up, they are easier to get to know than INFJs. Similar to what we just discussed, this also goes back to their feeling trait, in this case, the introverted feeling. This means that they may be less receptive to others' emotions, but are more comfortable with their own feelings and are better able to open up to others because of this. Number six, interests. INFJs love to seek meaning and make sense of things by fitting them into orderly patterns. Because of this, they enjoy helping people and trying to answer the question of why people do things the way they do. INFJs often find fulfillment in careers like education, counseling, or healthcare, because these involve using problem-solving abilities as well as having a desire to help others. INFPs are more drawn to creative pursuits like music or film. They are more likely to follow their heart than an INFJ is and will do something because they find meaning in it. Because of this, you will often find an INFP in a creative position like an editor, graphic designer, or filmmaker. So there you have it, six differences between INFJs and INFPs. Let us know in the comments if we missed anything. While you're there, let us know what topics you'd like covered next. As always, thanks for watching How to Charisma. Don't forget to like and subscribe.